The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is one of the 90s' most iconic sitcoms. Unfortunately, for every great episode, there is one that doesn't quite hit the mark. From the funniest highs to the cringiest lows, these are the best and worst episodes of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I, Clownius is a truly cringe-worthy episode that doesn't really fit in with the vibe of the series at all. While other episodes manage to combine serious, life-threatening scenarios with Smith's signature brand of humor, this one just doesn't work. The premise is that Uncle Phil is presiding over a high-profile trial and is getting some threatening messages as a result. So when he, Will, and Carlton stop at a gas station and are suddenly held up by a clown with a bomb strapped to him, things get serious, but not at all humorous. The crazed mad clown wants his big break via a TV appearance, but the whole thing is really just kind of sad. The clown isn't funny, his performance is pathetic, and having Uncle Phil, Will, and Carlton mock him just makes them seem mean. Sure, they're being held up and threatened, but mockery isn't exactly a good angle to take when you're trying to talk down somebody who's on the edge. All in all, this was one of those season 6 episodes where it felt like, as the series was wrapping up, they had really begun to run out of ideas. In the first season of Fresh Prince, Carlton gets a lesson in what Will's life is really like. The Banks family are heading to Palm Springs to visit friends when Uncle Phil's business partner asks Carlton to drive his Mercedes, since everyone else is going via helicopter. Will tags along, but the two are soon pulled over and arrested. Carlton believes the official story that they were pulled over for driving too slowly and arrested because the car wasn't theirs. But Carlton's worldview is crushed when Will insists that they were only being pulled over because they were two black guys spotted driving a nice car. Uncle Phil bails them out, but not without giving the cops a warranted lecture on their legal mishandling of the situation. When Will, Carlton, and Uncle Phil get back home, Will berates Carlton for believing that their race had nothing to do with the incident. I hope you like that system, because you're going to be seeing a whole lot of it during your lifetime. In the end, Carlton appeals to his dad who wants nothing less than to destroy his son's innocence with the realities of racial profiling in the criminal justice system. If any of the more serious episodes of Fresh Prince are still relevant today, it's this one. Mistaken Identity, sadly, is a genuinely timeless classic. I don't want to marry you. See? <laughs> that wasn't that hard, was it? <laughs> oh. It was only a matter of time before Playboy Will found a serious girlfriend. But settling into marriage while barely through college? That's where this particular relationship lost the love of a lot of fans. Lisa was introduced during the early part of season 5, in Will's Misery. The premise of that episode was that Lisa was pledging a sorority and had to capture the notorious womanizer Will for some misery-style shenanigans. That storyline already put some people off to the character to begin with. So when the two ended up engaged less than a season later, things still didn't feel right. In A Decent Proposal, Will finds himself healing in the hospital after being shot by a mugger. He's probably under the influence of painkillers and definitely high on the adrenaline of his near-death experience. So naturally, that's when he proposes to Lisa. Lisa, will you marry me? Lisa later confronts Will and says he only proposed to her because he experienced a moment of vulnerability. Well, getting shot kind of has that effect on a brother. <laughs> Eventually, the two go through counseling and end up not going through with the wedding after all. But the whole relationship made an otherwise top-notch season kind of a downer. As for Lisa, she sadly didn't have a personality other than being Will's girlfriend, so she quickly disappeared without a second thought. Throughout the entire run of Fresh Prince, Will always aspired to be some sort of ladies' man. He was constantly hitting on girls, taking them on dates, and trying to get them alone. In later seasons, he finally devoted himself to Lisa but not without solidifying his reputation as a total player. So when Will actually hit it off with a girl who was unlike any of the others he's dated, the show managed to tackle the issue of body shaming and sizeism long before those words ever became a thing in society. Season 2's She Ain't Heavy features Queen Latifah as Dee Dee, Will's blind date to a basketball game, who's a little more plus size than he's used to. But Dee Dee calls him on his snap judgment of her size, and the two really bond over their shared sense of humor and similar interests. Will's still too afraid to ask Dee Dee to the school dance, however, knowing that his friends have already made fun of him for hanging with her. That's right, I can't figure out how a brother goes from T-bone to rump rolls, that's all. <laughs> Ultimately, Will and Dee Dee go on other dates, but they both have a miserable time. Will recognizes the error of his ways, and the two make up. Unfortunately, the relationship was soon forgotten, as is the way of episodic sitcoms, but Dee Dee's storyline really brought a breath of fresh air to Fresh Prince. 
In the incredibly offensive episode, Get a Job, Will and Carlton both battle it out for the position as an assistant on Hillary's daytime talk show. In order to get the gig, Will lands a famous movie director named Maurice, played by Chris Rock. But Maurice says that he'll only appear on Hillary's show if Will takes his sister, Jasmine, for a date night out on the town. The sister turns out to be Chris Rock in drag, and she totally digs Will, who has to fake liking her to show her a good time. Looking back now, the whole thing comes off as incredibly transphobic, and the cross-dressing comedy is pretty out of date and not at all funny. From the leopard print dress to the bad platinum blonde wig to the bright red lipstick, it's clear that the whole role of Jasmine is supposed to be a caricature of a drag queen, which by today's standards is more than a little insensitive. This was another late series episode, with the only plus side being that Rock's career took off after the appearance. In Blood is Thicker Than Mud, Will and Carlton participate in Rush Week at college and decide to pledge Phi Beta Gamma, a black fraternity on campus. Like any other frat rush, the tasks are humiliating and grueling, but Carlton is definitely treated the worst by Top Dog, the leader of the frat, because of his rich background. So when Will makes Phi Beta Gamma, but Carlton doesn't, Will tries to pretend that neither of them made it. However, when Carlton eventually confronts Top Dog, the frat leader calls Carlton a sellout. I'm not accepting no prep school Bella bread sellout into my fraternity. But Carlton, surprisingly enough, stands up for himself. Being black isn't what I'm trying to be, it's what I am. I'm running the same race and jumping the same hurdles you are, so why are you tripping me up? When Will and Carlton get home, Uncle Phil expresses his sympathy in a truly heartbreaking way. When are we going to stop doing this to each other? The episode did a wonderful job of showing just how complex Carlton Banks is as a character. As a young black man going to prestigious schools and living among affluence and wealth, he's constantly called on to prove that he belongs in the world of the wealthy elite. Yet on the other end of the spectrum, his blackness is constantly called into question because of that affluence and his cultural identity is questioned by other black people because of his wealthy upbringing. It must have been a pretty strange way to have grown up, and as this episode proves, there's far more to Carlton than Tom Jones in sweater vests. Clip shows are almost always boring, and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air had a good handful of them during its six-season run. By far the worst, however, was during season four in For Sale by Owner, when the Bankses are offered $1 million to sell their home to a wealthy, anonymous buyer. The episode then revisits some of the bank's most cherished items in their home, with only Ashley wanting to stay put. The rest of the family is chomping at the bit for a big payday. In the end, though, they're out of luck. The anonymous buyer turns out to be Donald Trump and his then-wife Marla Maples. As it turns out, however, Trump was actually talking about the house next door to the banks, so the deal is off. The Big 4-0 really showcases the comedy and confidence that all of the characters exuded throughout the show's run, especially when it comes to Aunt Viv. Facing the reality of turning 40 years old, Aunt Viv starts having a bit of a midlife crisis. When her kids play her a video at her birthday party showing some old home movies and photos, she remembers that, at one point in her life, all she wanted to do was dance. So Aunt Viv decides to head to a dance class, and also audition for a major role. The other younger dancers in the group question her abilities, but Aunt Viv proves them all wrong. She blows the other dancers out of the water in an amazing performance, driven by Janet Hubert Witten, who was originally a Broadway star herself. Once she's done, she gives the mocking dancers a snap before proudly leaving the room. As a result, Aunt Viv is offered one of the lead roles, but she turns it down, devoting herself to her job as a college professor and her family. She just wanted to know that she could still do it if she wanted to, and boy, does she prove it. Without a doubt, the very worst episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is the one where Will lies to a girl and fakes their wedding just to have sex with her and take her virginity. Yes, you heard that right. This was a new low not just for Fresh Prince, but for TV sitcoms in general. Here's how it goes down. Will's girlfriend Monique tells him that she's saving herself for marriage. So, what does Will do? Rather than respect her wishes and self-confidence, he proposes to her, and of course, Monique, for some reason, says yes, and Will has Jazz officiate a fake wedding. Will even gets all the way to their wedding night hotel room before he finally comes clean and doesn't let Monique go through with it. Watching the episode now, Will's behavior is such a serious act of deviant mistrust that it's practically criminal. Will's actions are so disgusting, disrespectful, and vile that the episode is genuinely hard to watch. 
After Will's dad, Lou, abandoned him and his mother when Will was just a little kid, Will grew up without a father figure in his life. So, when Lou returns after 14 years, Will is simultaneously hesitant and excited when his dad tells him he's finally ready to be part of his life. It's too little too late, but Will forgives his dad, much to the distress of Uncle Phil, who can't forgive Lou for abandoning his family. Lou and Will start planning a summer-long road trip together, but when the time to leave rolls around, Lou refuses to commit yet again and tries to bail without even saying goodbye to Will. Thankfully, Uncle Phil catches him and makes him face Will himself. Some business came up I gotta handle, so we're gonna have to put a, our trip on hold. You understand. Once Lou is gone, however, Will breaks down in a mixture of anger and sadness. How come he don't want me, man? That's when he collapses, crying into the arms of the only man who's ever been a father figure to him. The episode proved not only that Smith could really act when the drama called for it, but the show wasn't afraid to tackle serious issues like absentee fathers and psychological trauma. The episode was funny, touching, sad, and filled with love. In other words, it was Fresh Prince of Bel-Air at its very best. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.